Do it on a different line yeah. and then It did not work. I put a credit score of 500. It's still printing. Ah. Okay, where do you, <laughs> you different credit levels? Yeah, I put, okay, I, I kind of declared two credits, like down payment one and down payment, down payment and down payment one. Okay. So if it's greater, it's because I removed the greater than. So now. Yeah, so you can you can put it greater than ten. So then it's it, it keeps printing that same credit. That greater that has to be there, there yeah. so, somewhere. Yeah, so you can give it uh, different levels, and then say if it's greater than this, then you can go for down down payment one. Otherwise, you go for down down payment two. Yeah. We did not define good credit. No, we did not. This was Hold a on, good clause, but I like good credit. Huh? I like the way you're taking it. I, I, I made it very simple though. <laughs> I like the way you're taking it. Oh, I don't know. I was just, uh, I don't know. I was just running wild. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I need, but then if you say if group, if it is, if has good credit is true. If it has good credit is true, which was only one here, right? So we, we give them two options. We either down payment with 1%, is that 10% maybe? Yeah, two. yeah. and then another yeah. one, uh, the next percentage. Yeah, yeah but then, uh -huh. but then but the if statement, Yeah. It, it, it says if it has good credit, print the first down payment. Right. else print the second down payment okay. but how is this code supposed to know what good credit is so if it's good credit it will always print the first one if it's true remember yeah i put 500 and it's still printed the first one okay so okay let's go ahead and look at what you determine to be good credit and then uh, if that good credit. Yeah, so good. I commented it out. Okay. So if you know, you've already said has good credit, it's true. So you can comment that out uh -huh. and you put instead something else, which will be like, uh, uh, let's say, um, good underscore credit equals to 600. Then, what did I do? Equals to 600. Okay, so just copy the same thing and then comment this. Mm -hmm. Hello, Esther. How are you? Hi, I'm good. All right. Good to see yeah. you, Esther. <laughs> nice to see you too. It's actually raining here and power is going on and off. That's why I'm Living and joining. <laughs> we, we, we've already told you guys to pick a different president. Now you see, you have more power. <laughs> <laughs> power for us here, unless it's it, uh, act of God. 
Solo es tía. <laughs> oh, like you guys. This American. Think what here? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try with the with yeah. the five hundred. Okay. So that's Not working. Okay, it's, if it's 500. It just, uh-huh. You see, you need to put a condition. Okay, we have- That's what, if, 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 okay, if, if. So, so but already, you, if has good credit. But you've already, the, the, the has good credit has been commented. You need to put that in a condition up there. And then you say, if has good credit, that means has good uh, here. Has to be I already I commented it and I also put I declared it here. Okay, so it's six hundred or it's a range of six hundred and above. No, it's gonna say. So I can't use the less than or or. So you can use both less than, greater than. You can put. Can I use that in the if statement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I use it here? I thought you told me to take it out. No, I, I was telling you to take it out because it was not being declared. But if you oh, okay. declare it, then you have to use it so that you can use it in the condition statement. So can I can I can I put it here? Yeah. I had an, uh, yes, if you say if has good credit equals to let's say this has good credit has to be declared up, and then you are, it's gonna be like a constant. So has good credit has to be like Anywhere a range and then at above, yeah. So you don't good credit that. is 600. And don't say a greater than or equal 600 because right now it's only looking for 600. That's it, but you oh. to... okay. Or is greater than or equal to. If they greater, greater than before the equal sign, is it the right? Um, on the left, is it the exclamation on the left of the equal sign? So equal sign or greater than? Greater than before equal sign. Oh, uh, greater than or equal sign. Oh, gosh. Test them out. Do what, sorry? Let's space them out so you can uh, between Space? Yeah, give, uh -huh, and then after the credit also give a space. After the word credit, give a space, yeah. So right now you're saying good credit is anything greater than or equals to 600. And then now you can use it in the condition. You say if, and then you enter, say, if, good, if you enter anything 500, it will print the last, which is the last print statement. Otherwise, so the if statement, if has good credit is, can I do greater than or okay. equal to 600, okay. print the first down payment, else print the second one. Okay. So you've already, you've already declared and assigned it, right? So that yeah. location is now containing anything above 600. Or equal six. Yeah, if it's 600 and above, yeah. then it's going to be the first down payment. Okay, so if it's lower or else it's going to be the second down payment. So you see down payment one and down payment should, should come after that calculation should come after the condition. Oh, really? Yeah, because you, you want you want to do the calculation after you've already given them the variables. So yeah. after the condition here? Yes, yeah, so before the print though. Okay, say has good credit and therefore you do your calculation. Okay, your calculation here will be, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Doro. Take those back, I'm sorry. Take, take, take them back. 
uh, where they were before the, those calculations. How do I undo? Um, try the edit and then control Z. Oh, I don't have it. Just go, go click and then paste it back there. <coughs> yeah, after we declare the condition, we do the calculation, then we do the print. I'm sorry. Okay. No, uh, was it here? Let's just, just press enter. Paste them back. So we have has good credit has to be more than 600, or equal 600. And then the uh -huh. payment, before that down payment, we, we probably need to put another condition there. Let's see. Another if. Yeah. So that we say, okay. Now, if good credit, if has good credit. Okay, let me, let me think. See, down payment has to be one or the other, right? Exactly, depending on the credit score. Yeah, so if, if good credit, so you consider has no good credit to be less than 600. 600? Oh, so do you want me to declare that has no good credit? Yeah, let's go ahead and put that in there. Has no good credit, has to be less than 600. But I thought the, the else, mm -hmm. it would just, you know, the, the condition would just take care of that. Or do we have to declare? No, the condition should be able to take care of that. But sometimes mm -hmm. it probably it depends on what you want to do. But this one, okay. just, there are just two conditions. Anything above 600 equals 600 has to be credit. So we know anything below that will definitely be bad credit. So you probably want to use the and underscore there before the bad. And then you say has good credit. And then you say. Oh, what did I use? <laughs> Is less than or equal to okay so um, it's less than 600 do I, I don't have to put six equal to less than six. so what i was thinking before which maybe might work so you uh -huh. see where you say if has good credit before you print you probably want to put before the print statement you put the condition in there uh, the calculation for down payment. If good credit, do you want to go down payment one or down or just the down payment? Which one? I mean, I can change this to down payment one and down payment two. Yeah. So one of those will come just before the uh, before or after the print statement, and then the other one will be after the last or before the last print statement. See what I mean? Say if, that one more time. Yeah. If 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 uh, let's say has good credit is six hundred and above, we know we will print the down payment. And what down payment are we going to print here? It's going to be if has good credit, then you press and enter, and then before that print statement, you put the calculation of what you want that to be one of the calculations. Yeah, after the if statement here? Yeah, after the if. Uh -huh. If has good credit, then put a uh, down payment one here. Okay. Copy that and paste it there. Yeah, I'm gonna, you want me to remove it? Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. we just put it. Yeah. After, after. Oh, okay. Okay, and then the other Print one. Down payment one. Okay. And then else down there. okay and then now bring bring the other calculation and then paste it just before the print statement the last one okay yeah. 
try to run it, he might tell you some kind of indentation, but let's see. <laughs> okay. Syntax error, okay. Put a colon after the if statement. Indentation, the down payment in debt. Indent the down payment. Yeah, indent to be the line in French and this other one too. Run it. Okay. Okay. Error. Name error. Okay, so bad ask bad credit. Go back and let's see what that is. As bad credit. So I scroll back up. Here. Okay, as bad credit. Bad credit. Okay. Okay, put uh and put uh Z do I put a range like zero yeah put to ninety-nine? Yeah, put put five ninety-nine and below and put equal sign after the less than sign. Okay, and then change that six hundred to five ninety-nine and below. Okay, let's see what's the error again. Okay, why, <laughs> why are we getting this when the same name is not defined? So let's go back up all the way and see. has bad credit has good credit has no problem is there anywhere we defined it good credit yeah. we we um we commented okay so we, we put uh hold on uh good credit we commented out this one oh okay do i do the same for the bad credit no it's okay um Looks like it's good. We're actually defining it because we're declaring and we're putting a value in it. Okay, that's good credit. Okay, you know what? That yeah. comment out has bad credit. So we know anything lower than um, 600, it's gonna be automatically bad credit. So, you may comment that out. Comment out, yeah. And then uh, um, um, let me see here, should be good now. Go ahead and run it. So we know if it's good, it's gonna print the first option. Otherwise it's gonna print the second. Okay, so I'm gonna try a bad credit, like 550. Okay. <laughs> no, not working. All right, let me see. Uh, what is this saying? Credit score. It just passing. it's printing the 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 first down payment. Okay. Yes. For good credit. This is just a condition now. So we know there's no error. It's just this is an error we call uh, not the syntax but logical. So it's just the condition we need to put here. Let's see, bad credit. If down payment two, we need it to print down payment two if it's not good credit. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not reading what a great, good credit is. Yeah, for some reason it's skipping it. So past good credit is 600. 
And then uh, we are not using it anywhere here. Though. Oh, we are using it up. If has good credit, then you print that. Okay. Otherwise, you print this other one. Okay. Let's see. Okay, if you, if you put uh, hmm. okay, go ahead and uh, put uh, as good credit is 600. Good credit equals to 600. Okay, but we gave it a range, which is good. Just, just 600? Yeah, if you put 600, let's see what happens. But I know it's no, it's gonna complain. That's what I had before. Yeah. Then run it. So good credit is that. So that okay. we only deal with six hundred. So this one might work, but it might not be very. Okay. Let's go. I'm gonna say I'm just gonna try 500. Okay, that should be able to print a second. Oh man, come on. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, no, it, it, it's, not, it's not, it's just a little it's, bit from logic. It's, it's be, you know, I'm gonna, how about I, I, I declare that? Which one? Oh, okay, but I declare the body credit. No, but it should, but the else statement. Yeah. It's just, yeah. You shouldn't have to declare the other part. Yeah. If, right? If, With an if else, you shouldn't have to declare the opposite. Yeah, normally either or. So the else will always go for the for the for the false one. Yeah, let me let me see. Uh, can you copy this in uh, your collab, right? Can you copy in collab and share with me? Collab is just. Uh, I go. don't think I do. I'm just. Uh, okay, collab is just go type. I think this actually just go collab and then. Since you hold on, just a moment. I may comment this. Uh, up. How do you spell that? Double L? O Two L's? Single L, collab. Dot. So the last one, go the last one, option, collab Google. Ah, collab Google. And then uh, just- It's gonna be this one here? That one. Google collab, that one there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then go, okay, now go ahead and click cancel here. Let's cancel that down there, down on the bottom right. Uh -huh. and then in the file, click on file and then click new. New notebook. Click new. Yes. Uh -huh. This is almost equivalent of way the same environment, but this in Google. So you can go back to your Jupyter notebook, copy and then paste it in here. Um. And copy that. Now bring it back to yeah, paste it. Okay, now you see up at the top right corner those images of two people with a share. Click on that. And then you can just uh, type my email here. And I yeah, that one. Just click on that. Then you share with me, so I'll receive it. Then I, I can edit. When I edit, you'll be able to see on your own. Okay. So that way, you don't have to 
talk more time on this. Yeah, I don't know if I'm just overthinking this, but um, is there an easier way? <laughs> you know, you know, I don't know, I just you can go uh? wild with it. You can go wild with it. That, and that's, yeah. that's the fun of it too. I don't I don't want to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I just um read the question and I'm like, you know what, let me see if I can write a code that can fit this. I did I, not like I, I like the way you did it. I really like the way you did it. I'll 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 look at it and it's gonna be not a big deal. It's just mm. small you probably just did not see. Okay, you see the price thousand uh -huh. dollars or ten thousand dollars. Uh-huh. So you no, know, if has good credit, that's be six hundred. Yeah, but the price has to be declared because we're using that there as a variable yeah. for the down payment. Yes. And then I will say otherwise, bad credit has to be five ninety nine and below. So we print. Enter. Enter. Credit score. I'm sorry, Esther, for taking your time. You probably finished this a long time ago. <laughs> Esther is good to go. Esther. You're on mute. Oh, sorry. I am good. I'm good. It's fine. I'm actually learning um, from this. Is it possible to like share your to move your cursor to the left if possible because I can't see the, the full code? Um, yeah, like that to the left, yeah, it's fine now. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, I can share this with you too if you're um, no, it's yeah, fine. honestly, I can... huh? I have a question. Okay. You see why you've declared has good credit? Yes. Greater than or equal to is an oper comparison operator. Or is it an assignment operator? We, assignment is only the equal sign, but uh, greater than it is just a comparison. We basically comparing, is it equals or greater than 600? So 600 is what we need to declare. What is 600? Uh, 600 is going to be there has good credit, otherwise has bad credit, 599 or less. We use the assignment and then we compare using the... Or do we need to do a range? Good credit equals to this, to this, no? You, you, you can try that. I don't think there's gonna be any problem with that. Let's go ahead and try that. How do you do that? Is a uh... one second. What if you try to put the comparison on the if statement? The if I try if, if has good credit is great. That's what I had tried before. He had me delete that. Like uh... if credit is greater than if. Credit. If has good credit, because I haven't declared credit. I don't have credit as a variable. I have has good credit. So if has good credit. Oh, if, credit score, if credit score, sorry, if credit score is greater than or equal to has credit. I don't know, <laughs> just thinking. If credit I haven't score, declared credit score either. Credit score, you've declared it as input. Enter credit score. Yeah, but it, it's a it's a it's like a print statement. It's like a it's a print statement. It's a print statement. But it's it's a not variable. a variable. Really? Where where you put the input? Like the input. Yeah, but then if I remove this, if I remove the that's why I have it in quotation. Oh. It's gonna print that credit score, the word credit score. So why not? Please? 
input, like just put some. So, so you want me to say if credit score, if credit score is uh, greater than yeah. or equal to has, no, that means you have to change. I don't know. Like if you, you have to declare a specific variable in has good credit, like 600 something. Yeah, I already commented out. So you want me to uncomment that good credit? Yeah, has which well, if credit score, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe remove, try remove this good credit. Yeah. And then if credit score is equals is greater is do you want it to be greater than greater than, greater or, equal than or, to, or equals to six hundred print the first down payment. Uh, Else, yeah, on, hmm? on credit so you can write like instead of writing input credit, you can say like enter. Enter something, enter credit score or something. In the if statement? In the in the credit score where you declared the input, mm -hmm. you can you can like give a prompt or something. Yeah, enter credit score. Yeah. Then print that then else. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I can try that. Yeah, I'll try that. Okay, so how do I run this file? That play button. I'll see the play button. Oh, now. okay. Yeah. Or the error on the name. Just put the name, the first two lines. Second line. First two. The second line. This. Colon. You haven't put a colon after six hundred. After what? After six hundred. After... Colon. Oh, okay. Give me a full name. It doesn't like that. Or is it giving me an error in up here? <laughs> it was printing before. I didn't yeah, change anything. You sent it to me for some reason. Now all of a sudden it's having that error. Yeah, before. So you want to. You wanna put yeah, put yeah, for everything? Okay, I'm I had the everything. Hold on. Oh, here. How do you edit here? Doesn't let you? Oh, it will, it will edit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Works the same way uh, the other one does. <clears throat> Okay, so okay, school. Okay, let me try again. The 
because I'm scrolling it up from there. I don't know what this is. Why do I get this thing? It's blocking my view. Mm. To be it's being changed remotely, that's what I'm being told. Uh, CV changes. Okay. First name, so. You know, you, you, you're putting in the credit score, mm. but not using it anywhere in the, in the calculation. Instead, you're using the price. Hold on, just a moment. You see that? Yeah. So we are not using uh, credit score to determine anything. That's why we we're not using getting the right input or the right output. So say what, what you said credits. We are not using the one. Okay. You, you say you are asking the system to for you to put in the credit score, which we okay. actually do. But when we go into the if statement, there's no way we are using it. So we need to be able to determine what are we what are we putting it for. What is the credit score going to help us in calculating? Is it, let's say, if this credit score is this much, then do this calculation. Otherwise, do the second calculation. But we are not using it anywhere. We're just inputting it, but we are not using it to determine. But we use has good credit or down payment, or should I say, I don't know. Um, you know, yeah. I don't even know how to do this. Hold on, I'm going to move this. Um, Can you move it to the left side? I if has yeah. good credit, mm -hmm. is so with the calculation here is on the price. Mm -hmm. So uh, down payment, huh? If in the if statement you need to say if credit score is greater than or equal to, um. And you have lost it. Can you move to the left again? <laughs> um, I can see you could lift. Yeah, that's all. When you say move to the left, move my cursor or what? No, no, you've moved it now. Yeah, it's good. Like, okay. when you, yeah. It's greater than, like, what are we using the credit score for? Like, is the credit score what will determine, like, um, the down the, payment? Okay. So if I think there's a problem with the has good credit, so maybe you can comment it out and see because that's the name or not. You can use in the calculation, you can just use credit score. If if credit score equals to or greater than six hundred, then do that. That means uh, the if statement put the the credit score in there instead of has good credit. So I, so I comment out the has good credit. It's already comment. Yeah. You can. Okay, has good credit here. Yeah, instead use the credit score. Mm -hmm. So if credit score is greater than or equal to 600, yeah, you can the even down say, payment. Yeah. You can even say it's greater than or equal to, you've declared 600 in good credit. So you can use the variable name as a constant. So you mean say if good credit equals to six, you mean if credit score is greater than or equal to good underscore credit, right? Is that what you intended to do with it? Like why did you declare good underscore credit is equals to six hundred? It was commented out the first time. Because we're entering it, but we are not using it in the calculation. So that's why we keep on getting the same answer. How about I comment it out? So credit score can just be used instead of has, or has good credit. OK. So, so if credit score so 
has good credit or has bad credit has no relevance here if we are inputting the credit. Yeah, so I'm gonna delete this bad credit, right? Yeah, just, just comment them out for now. Comment, yeah, because uh, I mean, an if statement, if else statement, I mean, you shouldn't be able to declare both sides, the if or, you know, the, uh, I mean, if one side is true, if it's not true, then it should print the opposite, okay. right? You don't have to like declare the opposite. The opposite is going to be automatically because if you're else. That's what I thought. So um, so if, if, if credit score is greater than or equal to 600, then the down payment is 0 0.1 times the price, and then print down payment one, else down payment two equals to 2%, 2 cent, then print down payment two. Okay, I'm gonna try this. So my working, what you love huh? to do, um, there's a question here you love to, you love to figure out, see the if statement? Uh -huh. You have to put an integer before the credit score. Okay, let me see. Um, you see it online, uh, the first if statement? Uh -huh. Just after the if, then put int, I-N-T. For the credit? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the input is always a string. Uh -huh, and then put a, a, a bracket. It's, otherwise, it's going to tell you it's a string. You cannot do calculation with a string. And then uh, after the six, uh, after the credit score, put yeah. That's good, right? So go try. Okay. Okay. Programming is fun, Dorothy. When, when, when really- Pull your hair, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the time when you, sometimes you take take a walk and then come back. The, the Eureka moment comes. Enter credit score, and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna purposely put 500. Yeah. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. You. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take a screenshot of this and save it. The good thing the good thing with this, when you work in Colab, you have a Gmail account, so it saves it for you in Gmail. All you have to do oh, is it's... the untitled up there, just change the name to what you want it to be. So if you go into your Google Drive, you'll be able to see them all. You just change the name uh... without affecting the extension. So what am I, okay, oh, it's gonna be. You can say My name? Yes, sir. yeah, I can put Dorothy. Just make sure you, they're all unique names. I'm still gonna take a screenshot. It's okay, go ahead. I'll also show you, do you have a GitHub account? No, I don't think so. It's always good since you're going to development. It's always good to check. <laughs> I'm going to development. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be a software development developer, huh? Yeah, it's a security slash, you know. It's a big deal, though. Yeah, software. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, with my. Uh, <clears throat> Where is it? Oh, the, what were you looking for? I'm looking for my snipping tool. <laughs> yeah, that's a lifesaver right there. <laughs> you know, I'm like, where is my snipping tool?
Yeah, that was something. Yeah, it's a very small thing, you know. Takes a long time. I know. Thanks, Esther. I will, I I don't know what I was doing, but uh, I was just thinking outside the box. <laughs> No, but maybe it will have worked. I think it's the end thing. No, like oh, it's the end thing. It was thinking you're comparing a string and a. No, the end it will tell you it cannot work with strings to do to do the thing. Just if you remove and neutralize, it, I'm gonna give you a big error there. Remove the end. Yeah, remove the end and the brackets and then try. And try okay. It's always good to see those errors. So next time you see it, you know exactly what to look for. The narrow there, the credits. I see the string, the last line. That's not supporting. Yeah, if credit score is 600, oh, that's where the. Yeah. What if I. Okay. That's a string. It's an integer. Okay. It means you're taking a string, which is uh -huh. a credit score, and then you're trying to put the value inside it. You're comparing, you're comparing the value with a string. So it's not doing it. Even though we put the the the, the okay should be a, inside it should be a string. So I think the thing the, the um it was the integer thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's the type conversion. What? You can try with different, try something greater than 600. Let's see what it does. Okay. It should be less. less. What? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. I was just pulling. I'm like, okay. So what am I not doing? What am I? But um. Well, conditions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other question you have on this or any other one? I, I didn't even attempt the other one. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you, Esther? I didn't even attempt the other one. <laughs> no, I didn't. Can we see? Can we look at it? So we can... Yeah. Yeah, we could. And I'm going to stop sharing so we can. Esther, you have the other one? Nobody wants. Oh, no, I don't have. The other one. I'm not in the Say again. Pattern. I don't think I received um, emails from this now. <laughs> I can barely make up what you're talking about. Oh, I'm saying Is I it... don't think 
I received emails for this class. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, let me go for a Um, it's it's on Google. It's on Google Colab. They're the one you sent. Um, hold on. I can. The one we just did is not. There was assignment number three, right? Yeah, the one we just did is assignment number three. The, then there's another one you sent um, from oh. Google Colab. Regarding uh, like Nelson Mandela. That one. Uh, that was assignment number two. Yeah, Nelson Mandela, that was assignment number two. Then this one is uh, for Bernard in Jaroge, that's assignment number three. Okay. And then there's another one for, for uh, Google Collaboratory. Okay, I did not. Assignment number one, where just like you tell your last person last name and then you give your goals. That was done. That's done. That assignment you did that. one is done. Two was done. Two was the one for Nelson Mandela. And three is the one that we've just been doing. And there was an, something you sent after that. The only three. The, the, the one we just did was the last one. It, it was you to debug. You wanted us to debug a code. Yeah. That was, you see, you, you, you went an extra mile after the debug, you even injected some of the ideas. In. Oh, so this, the second um, message you sent us was just to, uh, was just uh, instructions for the assignment number three? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. I thought that was another assignment. We did good at this one. <laughs> yeah. uh. And then I think there was another one to watch a YouTube video. Yeah, that was for um, Bitwise. Mm -hmm. Operators, did you get a chance to do that? I did, I started watching it. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but it got stuck somewhere. Yeah. But I'll try again. It, it uh, I could hear, I think it just froze. Okay. So I couldn't see what she was doing, but I could hear. But I think, I don't know, it's probably me, my end. I'll try again. That probably was on your end. Because I did it on my end and I was able to finish it. It, it worked on your end? Maybe it's just me. Yeah, it's working. Pretty much just addition of uh, binaries and I would do the ones and choose complements. And then mm -hmm. I would see the, how the operations, how they computed actually achieve the numbers. So since you have watched it, I will not go into that until maybe at a later time until you watch it, then we do it. Esther, did you say something? Oh, I wanted, I was asking if you can explain the one, the compliments, the one compliments. Okay, the compliments? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm not very good at writing on this board here, but I'll try. Okay, so, so you know how we convert, like, uh, let's say number 50. That's an integer, right? Yeah. And then we can convert that into, let me go ahead and do it here. Okay, we can convert that into binary. Yeah. So we have 50. Can you see? Mm -hmm. No. I'm going to use a big mark. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 50 here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then uh, we basically divide 50 continuously by two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we put the remainder on the side right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you. So two goes into 50 25 times, right? Yeah. You remain with? A zero. Zero, right? See that? Yeah. 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 Two, two goes into 25, 25. how many times? 12 times? 12, you mean one. Yeah. See that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two goes into 12. A six times, you mean the zero. Zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two goes into six. Three, Three. times. Remain with? Zero. Zero. Okay. And then two goes into three. One. Uh, one. Remain. Yeah, one. Remain. See that? Yeah. Okay. 
Now, based on that, you take this number from here, go all the way up to the top. Uh -huh. Okay, that number. So that's going to be the binary equivalent of 50. So that's an interesting way of doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it different in networking. Oh, you did, yeah. Different. It was the same way, right? The same, the same uh, outcome. Now, yeah. like writing an IP address in binary. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, it's the, different. The, the octets. You guys do the, the IP address. Those are the octets, right? Yeah, like writing that in binary. It's really different. Yeah. So take this number. That number. Mm -hmm. That number. Can you see? Mm hmm. Okay, that number, that number, and then zero. Okay, this is binary. Uh -huh. That's binary, right? So binary mm -hmm. one one zero zero one zero. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Now remember, when we say one's complement, we take the same numbers. Okay. If this is one, now we convert it to zero. This is one, we say zero. So we basically get the opposite of each. So it, since we had one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, mm -hmm. so one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. To get the, to get the one's complement, we basically mm -hmm. say now this is gonna be zero. Zero, zero. One, one, one zero. zero. One. That's the one's complement. And now to get the two hmm. complement, we basically add hmm. one here. Okay, do the addition. And then one plus one equals to zero, zero, one. Right? Zero. You carry? Yeah. One. Put one here. One plus one again. Zero, one, zero, okay. yeah. Again here. So that's uh -huh. gonna be the two's complement. And that's hmm. the okay. Okay. so to do the two's complement one more time. What okay. are we doing? Okay. We got we got the binary here, right? Yeah. And then we basically got the opposite of those. The, we wrote it mm. here, the one's complement. Yeah. And then for the two's complement, just add one to this number. Okay, so okay, so so you add one to one. How is that a zero? One one plus one in binary is zero. You carry uh, one. So like, what's the significance of having no ones complement to his complement? I was I was gonna explain that next. Oh, okay, sorry. So computers, the way computer does the calculation, especially when we do, uh, let's say, subtraction. Mm -hmm. Has to do the ones complement. So let me let me go and uh, give you a very clear explanation here. Okay. So, the significant ones complement. So one's complement is simply a bitwise not get. Not normally is a negation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have we have one, mm -hmm. delta, and then we have another one, delta, right? And then I say mm -hmm. Esther or Dorothy, then that means if Esther come mm -hmm. or Dorothy come, then this is going to be true. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the all. Okay, mm -hmm. but yeah. if you mm -hmm. see Dorothy and Esther, okay, and mm -hmm. only Esther come but Dorothy don't show up, then this will be false. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that means in binary, in binary one 
always mean true. And zero always mean false. Okay. So there mm -hmm. whereby we need that to be twisted, like we need to negate it. So if we say Dorothy came, but Esther did not come, okay. Mm -hmm. But we request it for either or, then this is true. We still, we still accomplished our goal, right? But mm -hmm. if we say Dorothy and Esther, but only Esther came, then our goal is not accomplished. That means we, the, the logic is false shot. So it's false, right? Mm -hmm. There are cases whereby we need to switch. Okay, if it's on, it's on, it's one, right? If it's off, it's off, it's zero. zero. So the opposite of one is? Zero. The opposite of zero is? One. That's the not bit. So we can oh. get the not, the not, not bit. It's either or. So one's complement is simply a bitwise not yet operation. Okay. So we say like uh, the way we, we basically have, for example, one zero one one, mm -hmm. but that zero one zero zero, that's the one's complement. If we uh -huh. add one, then we get the two's complement. If you want to know this in subtraction and 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 uh, yeah, in subtraction and and, uh, and addition in computing, the, the system uses that to mm. accomplish the goal to get us the results. Okay. Okay. Also, it's not like the way we do subtraction. No. Right. <laughs> Computers are not very smart, but they are very smart. Give them the garbage, they give us the garbage. Yeah. So whatever we give them has to be good. And this is how it, it actually, because computers only understand zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call the machine language, machine programming code. Computers use it machine code. One or zero, mm -hmm. zero or one. Then to do subtraction, and addition, it has to do with the ones and the twos complement. Okay, mm. and we have yeah. the numbers. Yeah, that's the that's the simple part of it. If you are to do the hundred, do the same thing you did on the other fifty. And then you the ones complement the twos complement. Then you can do the division, you can do the subtraction and all that. But the base will always be subtraction and and, and addition. The ones and the twos complement. So, so question, uh -huh, go ahead. If I want like the 50 mm -hmm. on the way we did the first time, so if I want to add, I do the twos complement. If you want if, to add the 50. Is that twos complement? To add, okay, you add one to the binary of the opposite of what you got to get the twos oh. complement. Okay, okay. So if we did, uh, let's say, let, let's go ahead and do another one. Okay, let's go ahead and do, let's say do five, okay? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. okay. Two goes to five, twice, right? Uh, two, three, yeah. Remaining, one. One, okay. yeah. Goes into two. One time. Zero, uh, two. Zero. One time we get zero, zero, one. Yeah. Good. Okay. So if you mm -hmm. see here, you can write one, zero, one. Yeah. But okay. remember, we always operate on the six, uh, on the 18 bits. So this is only three. So mm -hmm. we add five more bits. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so that will be a full eight bits. Okay. So mm -hmm. an eight bit machine. To get the ones complement of this, we basically twist this one. So this will be one. And this this one, one. one. Now it's going to be a zero. A zero. Mm -hmm. This will be one. This will be zero. And then we'll be having ones. Okay. Yeah. That's ones complement. Now, if you want to get the twos complement of that, you just add one. 
and then we do the same calculation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I say mm -hmm. negative integers. Okay. Two mm -hmm. statement makes sense to be used for negative integers. One mm -hmm. statement is just a computational technique which might be helpful to evaluate the tools complement. Okay. Now tools mm -hmm. complement makes sense because it can be used in natural addition and subtraction in arithmetic without any need to change the bits. It might not make a lot of sense, but just take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Needs more, that's, more that, reading. That's, that's the basic. And then now, uh, the more you get to learn it, the more it's going to be in your head. Okay. So, so how do you learn that? How do you or like how do you put it in practice? Like the ones that will complement. You really it. might not even be able to use it there, but it's good to understand the concept. Okay. So for example, right now, say the two's complement allows negative and positive numbers to be added together. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Without yeah. any special logic. Okay. Yeah. This means that subtraction and addition of both positive and negative numbers can be done by the same circuit. Remember, computer has a circuit. Mm -hmm. In that board, there's logic gates. Logic gate will be something like um, Do a, do a lot of that in, in, uh, in electronics. So uh, we call them truth tables. What? We call them truth table. For oh. It's going to be a little bit technical. Don't worry about the technical part. Just, just the understanding here, right? So mm -hmm. let me go ahead and uh, see if I can uh, draw something here for you. So, if we have a, this is a circuit logic gate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have, it's going to be the output here. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Then this is going to be the input. Okay. And that's going to be the input here. So, they can come in and somehow the processing is being done in here. And then we get the output. Now we can say, okay, I will, mm -hmm. I will write a very, I will write some very good notes in this one. The video is just to help us prep and understand, but I'll write mm -hmm. some very simplified notes so you can read, like walking us through step by step. So we have A, which is this one, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have B, which is this one, right? Mm -hmm. But you expect an output here, which is which is going to be here. I'm sorry, maybe, maybe I need to buy. I have a big board here, but I don't have a camera facing me. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I choose my struggles. I'm I'm pulling. <laughs> Are we together, Dorothy? <laughs> so here yeah. we have zero. Okay. And here, we mm. have zero, okay? And then we have a gate, it's a NOR gate. NOR gate and XOR gate, XO. Mm -hmm. So the output between this and this in an XOR gate is gonna be one, okay? Mm -hmm. The output here and here, if this is zero, and this is zero, we do we get a one in an X or or nor gate. Okay, let me see if I can I'm sorry. Let me let me share the screen here so you can see that. I was gonna say, yeah, you can share the screen and use a pen or a highlighter and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you see here, this is a nor gate. Nor get is actually almost or, but it's with a nor. Remember the word not, the mm -hmm. notation. So here yeah. we have input 
of A and input of B. We get an in output of A if you are using the NOR gate. So O is, is a not which is zero, zero, you get a one. So we get a zero for input and then one for output. You get an output of zero. Zero. Okay. Remember that mm -hmm. if it was a no, if it was an or, that will not be the case. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. is opposite of or. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. here, if we say Esther or Dorothy, if neither of those, I mean, of course, we don't expect anyone to show. So we get an or. It's a zero here. But if it was an or gate, we will be able to get a true here, which is going to be one. Okay. If it's Dorothy and Esther, for the nor gate, we will definitely get a zero. That's a false. If both of them show up. So Dorothy and Esther shows up, it's going to be a false. If Dorothy or Esther shows up, it's going to be a false. If Esther or Dorothy shows up, it's going to be a false. If none of them shows up, then it's okay. We are fine with them. So it's all about us about us in the sense that, is that what you want to see? For the or, it's gonna be the opposite of not. So mm -hmm. I, I, will, I, will, I will make some notes on this one, very detailed, with all the calculations. It might be several pages long, but it will explain it. You will not be needed to, to, to do this anywhere, but when you have it, it gives you a logic and a good way of how you can actually be able to process stuff you get out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's the understanding there. Is that is that uh, somehow clear? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll, I'll 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 cover more of that. But but you understand the, the ones and the twos complement. Yes, I've understood that. Did you understand also the, the binary calculation? We yeah. have addition. There's addition and subtraction of binary numbers. But for now, we only deal with, we break it down, say we want to break down 10. Okay. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Two? Ten. Mm, maybe. Okay. If you want to, yeah. if you want to do binary means two. Binary means yeah. two, right? Buy, buy, bicycle, buy, two. Uh -huh. Then octet is going to mean eight. Uh -huh. The hexa, uh, hexagon, I mean, hexa for 16. It's a decimal. Uh -huh. So right now we want to only concentrate on the binary. Then in the uh -huh. next binary, I'll put the uh, octal and then I'll also put the hexadecimal and how we do all those calculations. So right now, the binary of 10, okay. mm -hmm. we divide, yeah. two goes into 10 how many times? Uh, five times. What do we remain with? Zero. Zero. Okay. Two goes into five? Uh, twice, we remain with one. We end up with one, right? Okay, two goes yeah. into once we remain with a zero. Okay. We always count from there. Okay? Then we take, yeah. we take one, zero, one, zero. Okay? Normally, mm -hmm. for sanity's sake, you just want to fill out the blank with zeros because it's eight bit. Okay? Mm -hmm. Zero, 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 zero. Okay? To get the ones mm -hmm. component, Okay, mm -hmm. we, 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 we basically fix them, okay? So it's yes. zero, because that zero is one. one, zero. Zero one. One, 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 okay? So if you count this, there'll be this two, because it's binary. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. This one now will be a case complement. No, one's complement. So one one complement, yeah. This is a binary, okay? So mm -hmm. to, to get this to be two co two's complement, we have to add one. Add one at the end. And then we do the addition. Whatever we come mm -hmm. up with here will be the, will be the two's complement of of ten power is ten. To the binary. This of, of the binary of two of ten. This is binary of ten, and this is the, the one you get the one's complement. Complement of ten. Yes, of of ten. ten. And then okay. if you add one, it's gonna be the two's complement. So we do the addition one plus one. Zero, one. Okay. Carry one, put one here, one plus one again. Zero. Mm -hmm. Zero, 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 and then one, one, zero. Mm -hmm. It's easy, but practice will always make it perfect. Yeah. So at your own time, you can practice, ask me questions if you start. Mm -hmm. So yeah. also be learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yeah. That's how we do the bitwise operations. So let me let me show you the, the other part which probably uh, it's going to become in handy. Okay. So the bitwise operation. So we move we move these things around, and uh, the lady tried to explain it, but it's going to be all good if we try this again here. Okay. So let me share this thing. I think I'm still up to share it. So let me go ahead and blow uh, it. Okay, we have about one, okay, two, three, four, five, and six. There are about six operators or operations in binary and bitwise. So all these operators share something in common. They are bitwise operators, that is they operate on numbers normally, under normal circumstances. But instead of treating that number as if it were a single value, they treat it as if it were a string of bits, written in two's complement binary. Now you understand. Now that we already yeah. talked about the two's complement, right? Yeah. Two's complement binary is the same as the classic binary representation of the positive number integer, but it's slightly different from negative number. Negative numbers are represented by performing two's complement. That the two's complement we got here, okay, is actually negative. Mm -hmm. The two's complement we got here is equivalent to that as negative 10. So two complement operation on their absolute value. So we, we remember anything absolute is always, if it was negative 10, absolute of negative 10 is gonna be positive 10. Yeah. Okay. Now, so for summary, two complement binary of positive numbers. For example, zero is written as that. One is written that. Two is written as 10. So it goes down like that. So these are two's complement of these other numbers. So for example, we did, uh, let's do, let's do uh, 11. Let's find out what 11 is in two's complement. So we have 11, 
two goals, two goals to 11, how many times? Five, too many times. Yeah. Two goals to five, how many times? Twice. Uh, one. Twice, many times. Two and two. That is one, zero. zero. Okay. So we do again that. So it's going to be one, zero, one, one. That's the binary equivalent of 11. Mm -hmm. So that one has to be. Remember, this is always base 10, right? Yes. These are, this, this are human numbers. Me and you, we understand this. If you say 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I know what you're talking about. But the computer don't get that. The computer will always be in under ones and zeros. So this, since we did with two, it has to be binary, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? Now, this one, we have to fill it up because it's only four bits. So we add four more zeros to complete it. And then remember, we want to make it one's complement. So we switch. So you see, if this was one, this was, has to be zero. This was zero, this has to be one. Zero, zero, then this the one. Okay. Mm -hmm. so this is one's complement of 11. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. what, what is the two's complement? Two's complement, we add one to the far right digit. Mm -hmm. Then, once we do the addition here, whatever we get up here is the equivalent of whatever this yeah. is the equivalent of that level. That's going to be equivalent to the level. Okay. So, here they yeah. say two's complement binary for negative numbers. Negative numbers are written with a leading one instead of a leading zero. If, if there's a leading one, it's going to be one. Okay? That, mm -hmm. that one signifies that that number is actually negative. Okay? If it's a zero, mm -hmm. leading zero means that number is positive. So that's how they compare identify it. So, so if you are using only eight bits, like you did here, for your two's complement numbers, then you treat patterns for like uh, zero, 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 all the eight, okay? Mm -hmm. To that, zero, 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 zero point that, 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 all those. If you count this one, this will be eight bit as the whole numbers from zero to 127. Okay? Mm -hmm. Result that, you play with the one, for writing negative numbers. So if you have this six, okay, there's a six and then seven. So the first one will signify that that number is negative. If this is zero, then the whole number will be signified as, it's, as a positive. So a negative number minus X is written using the bit pattern of X minus one if all of the bits complemented or switched from zero to one or one to zero. Okay. So mm -hmm. negative one is complemented as one minus one, which is gonna be zero yeah. to that. Okay. And mm -hmm. the one zero is complement of ten minus one. I know it's, it's a lot of text. <laughs> okay. So, mm -hmm. of course, Python does not use eight bit numbers. Okay. It used to use how the many bits were negative for you. So, they, they basically corrected that. And that's probably a story for another day. But that's really getting to the detailed part of it, which you really don't need to. So, here, these are the operators. So, X less than less than y returns y i'm sorry 
returns x with the bits shifted to the left by y times. So that means if we, if we see anything like this, that means the bits, these bits are gonna be shifted to the left by the number of y. So if y was two, okay, and x three, then that means we shift three towards the left, but twice the amount of time because that's what y is. So that means, this means this returns x, okay? This one x, okay? With a bit shifted to the left by y places. So y is three, right? Mm -hmm. And x is two, right? So what does that mean? That means we shift x to the left, but three times. If this is 10 and this is one, okay? That means we shift one to the left 10 times. Okay? So that means the, 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 the new bits on the right hand side are going to be zeros you always want to account for those so that they can be 8 bits. So we can take, let's say, 1, 1, 1, okay? Mm -hmm. Then uh, we, okay, let me go, new page. Say, uh, say x equals to 2, y equals to 3. Mm -hmm. Then we say x, sorry, okay, that means we're shifting x but three times. So we move the digits to the left to three places, okay? Yeah. Okay. So that means we can we can also do the opposite. We can shift, let's say x y times. We can shift that. And when you do that, whatever remains, you fill it up with zeros. Mm -hmm. Up to eight zeros. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here they're saying y this returns x with the bits shifted to the right. Okay, y places. This is the same as you take, let's say, 2 to the power of y. Normally, 2 to the power of y. If y was 3, 2 to the power of y will be, par, will be 2 to the power of 3, which in this case we know is 3, is 2, uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then they say this one. This does a bitwise and each bit of the output is one. If the corresponding bit of x and y is one, otherwise it's going to be a zero. So I yeah. see Dorothy and Esther are in class or I say last week, Dorothy and Esther, you come to class and Dorothy comes, but Esther don't show up, then the result will be zero because my condition is not met. But if I say Dorothy and Esther, you're free to come to class next Sunday, I mean next Saturday and both of you come, then the condition is met. But if only one person show and for some reason another person is committed that did not show up, then that condition is not fulfilled. Okay. And then this one normally is a single line. Okay. And that means the all. Does a bitwise or does a bitwise or each bit of the output is zero if the corresponding bit of x and y is zero. Otherwise, it's one. So if I say, Esther, 
or Dorothy. You, you, you can come with us. And uh, both of you show up, then it's going to be, it's not going to be, the condition is not met. But if one or the other shows up, then the condition is met. It's true. Okay. And then we have this one here, the quiglet. This returns a complement of X. The number you get by switching each one to zero or zero to one. It's like almost a knot. This is the same as minus X minus one. Switching, zero, one, one, zero. Okay. And this is, this is an exclusive, bit exclusive. Each bit of the output is the same as the corresponding bit in X. Okay. Each bit of the output is the same as the corresponding bit in the X. So the output here, we expect it to correspond to the input. So that means bit Y is zero, okay, and it's the complement of bit one, of course. If that bit is one, so this this will take a little bit of imagination. <laughs> okay, it's exclusive. Exclusive that means uh, it's it it goes an extra mile to just be able to get that result achieved. So each bit of the output output is the same as the corresponding bit in the x. That means if you get if you get an, a one then we must have had an input of one. Otherwise, if you get a zero, we might have had, we must have had an input of a zero. So it's, it's exclusive bit wise. Okay. Just remember that, remember about the finite series of one bits in the negative number from this. I mean, this is just telling you what you really need to remember in order to be able to imagine those. It's going to be a new, it's a new territory for you to just be able to grasp this concept. So just remember about that infinite series of one bits in a negative number, and this should all make sense. Okay. So in Python, we allow operatory loading, overloading, which if you remember Esther, we did in introduction, whereby I can say this. I can say Dorothy. Okay. We add Esther. We can use, these are both strings. It's gonna be Dorothy Esther. You can also say three plus two. We know that's going to be equal to five. So this operator and this operator can be used in, in both. Therefore, it's operator overloading. We use both to overload. So this, there are some cases whereby we just need to use addition. Of course, remember when we're doing the, the loan calculation, the credit score, we had to be very explicit in making sure that the credit score is actually entered for it to be accepted. Otherwise, it will be, it will be implicit. Okay. That's good for them. Any question? I'll, 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 I'll share detailed notes. It's gonna be a few pages long, step by step. Then we'll understand it better. Yeah, that would be great because um, I'm lost. You lost? <laughs> the, your, that paper that you were drawing on, I don't know if Esther was seeing, but I wasn't seeing anything, but that, that's okay. Um, I can I can watch the video and maybe we share more notes. I was listening to what you're saying, okay. but um, I'm kind of visual. So um, um, maybe, you, maybe yeah, by next can... week, you figure out how to use the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's normally a little shaky on, uh, on the on the 
uh, on the board here, but I'll try. I'll, I'll make sure that I put something together on Zoom, I mean, on, uh, on my notes, and then I share. But we'll mm -hmm. cover it some more. Say again, Esther. Yeah. No, what I did is I, I transferred. You know, when you share your screen, mm -hmm. you, your size, your video is smaller, so I exchanged them. Okay. <laughs> so I was able to get people. All right. So let me see if I, uh, yeah, I need to get this board going. Never try. Well, you, uh, and that, that's okay. I mean, I, I can view the video, but um, it would be, there's a way you could use your, uh, share your screen and uh, use a, I noticed. Can I like, pen, you know, like, uh, um, how, I can't remember how it's done. Um, an annotation, with annotation you can use okay i'll i'll probably you know what i'll i'll, I'll put it together i can uh, uh -huh. have a big board here I'll, I'll make sure i put a camera there and then explain i'll put the notes and then i also try but so by next saturday we should be able to get both because this is not going to be a one-time lesson okay grasp it take a little bit more than one time yeah i can okay. explain i can explain but probably it's not going to make a lot of sense uh on, on this uh zoom thing okay so other than that let me go ahead and uh finish up with uh uh the part we started on which was sequence selection and iteration so let me go ahead and share that part of the screen Sorry, you didn't, uh, you are not seeing that drawing the way I do, very hard. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I, I mean, at some point you were shifting the paper and I could just see you picking something up, but I'm like, okay, so I can see what's on it. No, but sorry. the paper is too small and- um, I, I, I will buy um, a bigger, at least a bigger white <laughs> so it can be clear. Yeah. You probably need like, um, a white boot, you move that white boot marker, just move it closer to you, like right behind you, maybe. Yeah, because I have a big white boot here. If I, or maybe if, change your sitting arrangement so that the camera is facing that. Yeah, I can, <laughs> can, can you guys see that? Yeah, I can see the board. Can, can you see Esther? Can you see the board? Yeah, I can see the board, yeah. Some people normally invade my space here and take all my stuff. Yeah. Okay. Tell me if you can't see, I'll be able to correct it immediately. Somebody came and they took my stuff away. Can you see this? You can see that. Can you see if I wrote somewhere like that? You can see that. You know what? Oh, it's, it's kind of tiny. Yeah, it's tiny. I'll, I'll, Maybe you'll just make arrangements and figure out how to. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get a camera and then I zoom it in here. Yeah. Video camera so you can do that now. Anyway, so last time we spoke about. Um, okay, let me let me just share this one. We did the last part, which was uh, regarding uh, the if, L, if, L statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. We did also this if, L, if, L statement in Python, whereby we say this condition here, if this condition is true, then this will be executed. Otherwise, we'll go to condition two. If condition two is true, then this will be executed. Otherwise, we look for condition three and we say if condition two is true, then the code in condition three will be executed. 
else, we'll go ahead and fall back onto the else statement. So this, all this piece of block of code is gonna act as one. Only if one is executed, then the rest will be skipped. Otherwise, two will be executed and the rest will be skipped or the third one will be executed and the rest will be, will be skipped. But not everyone will be executed here. You either do one or two or three or the last one. So as you can see, there can be multiple elif blocks. However, there's only one else block allowed. So out of all these blocks, only one code block gets executed. If the condition is true, then the code inside the if gets executed. If the condition is false, then the next one is executed. Otherwise, the next one is executed. Or else we go and get the else be executed. If none of the conditions above are true. Okay. So Python L if else statement example we did here. We say number 112, and then we give it nine between nine and 99. So this Dorothy, this could be a very good implementation of your program in terms of the credit score. You can put this one as a credit score. And then you say the maximum credit score is, uh, I don't know, is it 800 or 750? And then you say- 800 maybe, nine, I don't know. Does it get to 900? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it, whatever that number is, we put it up at the maximum. And then we say, if, let's say nine, this is probably the lowest credit. So this is gonna be the lowest, right? This is the lowest. We say if the credit score is between 450, okay? And maybe 500, mm -hmm. and the credit score is gonna be low. Else if the number is let's say uh, five, five, let's say 501, 520, mm -hmm. then hey, that's gonna be probably a little bit fair. Fair. You fair. Know? It'll be fair. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. credit. Otherwise, if the score is beyond five, say 525, and maybe let's say 600, then it's, you can say it's a good credit. Good credit. Yes. Otherwise, we say else is going to be very good or excellent. Very good, excellent credit. So we can take the cue from here and then play around with that number. And this is a typical example. Actually, the credit score will be a typical example of how that can be applied. Okay. So if, let's say, we have nested if statement, nested if statement means we have like almost what I would call, not necessarily spaghetti code, but very convoluted. It, it can be very nested such that it might be very hard to even understand. But like uh, a loop? A loop will be different, because a loop will be like uh, iteration of one statement, maybe more than twice. Okay. So if, uh, oh, can you hold on one second, please? One second, I'll be right yeah. Okay, sorry about that, I'm back.
Okay, so um, when you talk of a loop, a loop will be like, uh, let's say we have a class of 10 people and we, we write a program. The program has to run 10 times if you are entering the names of each person. That's gonna be a loop. And uh, else if statement will be like, uh, this, is, this is a typical of what I call nested. It's very nested, like it has a lot of if, 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 if. Another uh -huh. example would be like, uh, let's say you, you have a menu uh, in a, let's say a menu of items in the screen. Say you have like, a, let's say this menu goes from share to me and then all that. Then uh, we have, there's a lot of if statements. It goes back and forth. That's a typical example. Okay, so if the previous, like what we just did up there, we covered, okay, in, in that we will learn the nested control statements. We can control, like we can put the credit scores, or we can say uh, if, if you score between uh, 91 and 100, then you get an A or if you score between 80 and 90, then you get a B. Or you say, if the score is between 80, 85 to 90, then that's gonna be, let's say, it could be a B. And then anything uh, below, let's say 60, it's gonna be anything below, let's say 60, you can say it's gonna be a Something like that will be falling very, uh, very suitably within those kind of parameters whereby we need the if else statement. Okay. When there is an if statement or if else or if else, if else present inside another, then we call that a nested. That's the nested loop whereby we have to make really lots of decisions. But at the end of the day, we only need one result. If the grade is between 90 and 100, we know it's an A. Okay, we can also say, if the age is, uh, let's say age five and six, then we know that's probably the first grade. Okay, that's a kid who's ready to be the first grade. And maybe between maybe, seven, six and eight, maybe second grade. But there are cases whereby that might not be following that pattern. But the if statement should be able to take care of that for us. So below here, we have an if statement inside another if statement block, this one. You say if the number equals to 99, negative 99, and if number is greater than zero, then we print this, it's a positive number. Otherwise, we know that's gonna be negative because the condition, the one following immediately after that condition has always to be true. Otherwise, we will go jump and say it's not true, therefore it's gonna be a negative. So if negative 99 is less than or equals to the number, which is this one, then we know it's negative number. So this one, if 99, negative 99 is less than or equals to 99, then you know it's a two digit negative number. Okay. So that's, that's it for the if statement. That was the last part we touched. Now today we are going to go ahead and uh, touch on uh, for like a few minutes, like I know we're running out of time. I don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and see real quick on the iteration. We call them loops. Okay. Python programming and loops explain. So loops in, pro in Python programming are used for iterating over a set of statements. Like I said, you know we we are a, a, a group of ten people. If we are designing a program, you want to put the name, maybe the address, the email address, the phone number. You want to put over 
and over until the last time. And Luke will be able to help us control that. Now in Python, we have two such loops, the for loop and the while loop. Okay. Now, the syntax for a for loop or the syntax for a loop in Python programming language is going to be like that. So we do use the for, that's the lowercase, and then the variable, which will be the variable we want to set it to, in, and then the sequence. So I'll explain. So if we say for i, in a group of 10. Say for i will be me in a group of 10. For another i will be Dorothy in a group of 10. Then for Esther, again, in a group of 10. So the body of the loop that has a set of statements, which requires repeated execution. So if we do this here, and then we put 10 there, and then we put an I there, it will repeat this number of sequence 10 times. So the, the, here the variable is, is a variable that is used for iterating over a sequence. Sequence will be now the total number where we want it to be of events. On every iteration, it takes the next value from sequence until the end of sequence is reached. So the sequence here could be, let's say, uh, sequence could be 10. And the variable could be just an i. Okay. So sequence could be 10 and the variable, and this 10 could be many other not necessarily what you want it. You can even declare that 10 to be a variable so that it's not hard coded in there because the number might change. They might not be 10 to more, they might be fewer or they might be more than 10. Okay. So Python, the for loop example here, the following example shows the use of a loop or for loop to iterate over a list of numbers. In the body of the loop, we are calculating the square of each number present and list the list and display the, the same. So the program here is to print the squares of all numbers. Okay. A list of integers. So we have this 1, 2, 4, 6, 11, 1, 2, and, and 20. And then we have the variables to store. It's a variable to, to store the square of each number. Okay. So we declare this a list, then we declare a variable, initialize it with a zero, then we come and say we iterate now. So we say for value, this one is going to be the, the variable in numbers. Remember the numbers here is what that is right there. Because we've already stored these numbers in here. And those numbers are actually six in total. Store them in there. Now we say for the value, which we don't know is a val is a variable, but we count in the numbers, so we take that and then we calculate the calculation. We say for each and every value, we square them and then keep that in there. in that. So let me go ahead and uh, run this so quick so that you can see how it works before we break. Okay. I'm going to share this other screen real quick. Let me copy that first. Okay. Okay, let me see here. Now you see, let me make it bigger. 
we have a number one, two, four, six, eleven, twelve. We keep all of those numbers in this number variable. And then we go ahead and declare SQ. This is a square. And then we, we call that square as a variable, we declare it as a zero. We initialize it. And then these are the values. And then this is the number. So this values, we go ahead and say, okay, sorry. Go ahead and say for each and every value we square it. So we say for four value, which is a variable, we declare that, then we say the number, go take it from the pool, that's the pool up there. Start with number one, then we square number one, but we keep them in, in the square. So if we run the first one, okay, that's not correct. Well, did we did we need to declare value as, as um as a variable? Yes. Oh no, is it declared somewhere? It's it's declared here for value in numbers. Yeah. If, if I if I can show you the example we just saw here, let me go back. So here, uh -huh. anytime you declare a poly, this will always be a variable. So okay. And okay. that's the sequence. The sequence is what you keep in, in this case, in the, loop, in, the, in the list. Okay. So if we come and run, uh, I'll probably just run them this way. This way can be copied in. So we run this one, we know the numbers will keep all the digits from here. And then this will be kept in the square. So we run that. We don't expect any output. And then uh, we take this one again for loop. Okay, so value, value, values, numbers, numbers. Okay, I know why it's square. Okay. So we run that. So it takes the first number. So you're not sharing that screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> so let's do that. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have these numbers. This is a list of numbers. Keep them in numbers. And then we square that we have to initialize it first. So that number is a pool. It's a pool of numbers. And then this is the value where we did the, the declaration. And then mm -hmm. we take an, another variable, which is now here, but we want to we want to remember how we put in the stats. So we go ahead and say, whatever we have here, we are going to take those numbers, okay? One by one, but we, we, we square them. Whatever we square, we keep it in the square root, in the square here, and then we go ahead and display it. So uh -huh. it's gonna go take, start from this one, go to the next one, go to the third one, and then we print all them out. So when we run that, this is what the output we get. So one times one is one, two times two is four, four times three is 16, six times six, that's six. 11 times 11, and then two, 20 times 20. So that's how we get the loop. Now, if you were to do the same here, uh, let's say uh, we have names, okay? We can do this with the names, put them uh -huh. the names, and then we can go and also do the same. If they are tentative, we just do the same, and it will go over and over. If, if we put that into statement inside that loop, Mm -hmm. That's how the, the poll looks like. And uh, I'll go ahead and stop here for now, but we will touch base again. This one will be just starting again next, uh, next Saturday. Do you have any question for me? Uh, no, I just took a screenshot of your code. So. <laughs> oh, that's fine. 
But I'll share this too, Adol. I'll share this and come to you. And also I'll, I'll, I'll compile very good notes on that. Uh, uh, good notes on uh, um, on uh, on bitwise operations. So by the time you watch that video, you'll be mm -hmm. having an idea because I'll do the addition, the subtraction, I'll do the binary, I'll do the octet, and then I'll do the hexadecimal, and then I'll do the, the ones complement, the twos complement, all nine yards, step by step. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah, I don't think I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch that video, and as I said, well, that that was a really different way of doing binary from what I <laughs> you know. Binary and uh, it's a decimal. It's yeah, kind of different. Guys, mm -hmm. uh, I think IP address is an octet, right? Yeah, it's an output, but you kind of change it into binary because computers only understand zeros and ones. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, when you do the subnetting and all that, you really exactly yeah, subnetting the side numbers. So sometimes when you borrow bits, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that, time, that was kind of different. Huh? At that time, you need to think like a computer. <laughs> Yeah, you think yeah, you, yeah, so either a bit is on or it's off. When it's off, it's a zero. Yeah. When it's on, it's a one. Yeah. But we didn't go into adding those, you know, like adding or subtracting the bit, the set, what did you call it? The, um, um, whatever we were doing, we didn't do that, but um, just uh, maybe changing it from hexagon to hexadecimal yeah. to, to uh, binary, you know? But uh, yeah, that's, that's what we did with, with subnetting. But this it's interesting, you know, how you were doing like, oh, well, wait, we did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be, yeah. this, this is, I think this is, um, this was a foundation because what mm -hmm. you guys were doing at the network level, that's a little bit on the higher side of things. But this is just like, how do you take a number, you con convert mm -hmm. it to binary, and then con from binary to octet, from octet to hexadecimal. Well, it, it's it's, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Say like uh, an octet, if you take like an IP address, um, you know, it has those decimals. So you, you kind of, uh, you take each octet and um, convert that, yeah. convert the next one and the next one. It's going to be like four octets, you know? So if it's going to be 192, you're going to convert that into binary, mm -hmm. maybe zero, one, one, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then take the next one, the next octet, the next one, because there are four. Then it's just going to be a bunch of zeros and ones. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. <laughs> this yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. break it down. I'll break it down. It's going to be several pages, but mm -hmm. I think it will be easier to understand mm. that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I don't think I have a question. Um, I guess I guess I understand more when I. When I try, when I hit the wall, I'm like st scratching my head and pulling my hair. I like, I like, <laughs> the, I like the way you did, uh, you, you, you thought of that uh, credit thing. That, I mean, now now I have an idea. I'm going to put a program together and then send it out there. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know even how, how I went to that extent. I don't, I don't know. I just saw your code and I'm like, maybe he just wants us to do it from scratch. Maybe he was just giving it as an idea. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't understand this code. I, I did, did not understand, you know, how you put it out there. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try mine yeah. and see if it, if it, I looked at the output Yeah. and I did reverse engineering. I'm like, okay, what yeah. code can give me this output? <laughs> I mean, that's the same thing they actually use out there. I mean, mm. they, they give credit scores. Those are just like numbers. And then based on that credit score, they can determine what what uh, interest rate they're going to be charging you, what 
you need to put down the down payment. And they, of course, get some other variables like uh, your credit scores, your history of payments, and uh, what other things you owe, and all that, uh, your income. Those are all factored in. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting what you can do with Python. It's a lot of stuff. Good stuff, too. Yeah, but I need to read more on that that bitwise thing. Um, yeah. Bitwise. Um, yeah. I'll, watch the video, mm -hmm. and um, it will be very interesting. Get time. I think it must have been on your end. Uh, try to clear must, reboot your system and then watch it without. Like uh, probably gonna try watching it on because I was watching it on the phone. Yeah. I'm gonna try watch it on the computer. Yeah. Because. Well, and then as, as, as she does it, you also practice it. And it's gonna make sense to you. Okay. Okay, yep. Okay. Otherwise, thank you very much. And uh, we hope again, your mom feels well, I guess well, uh, gets better pretty soon. Yeah, but she's doing better. She, uh, she has appointments next week, like okay. three appointments. Yeah. Uh, uh, or what was it? Yeah, it was. Okay. It was um it was a tumor mm. benign. Uh but then it, it was removed. So she has stitches that have to come out after two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks after surgery, it's gonna be next week. So um also mobility is she still oh she is doing good, like she is just it's only on the side where they did the operation her ear and eye yeah the ear cannot hear very well and the eye is kind of sleepy yeah, it's gonna but she, can she see through that eye mm, she says no so that's why she has a two appointments she has a one with the ent and an eye doctor yeah. and then and then and then the other appointment is good is to remove those uh, stitches those are staples and and to do an MRI. So should be all right. I got my hands full next week. <laughs> it's easy, it's easy. Oh. Yeah. yeah, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. I, I'm praying for her. Yeah, she well I'm glad she was here because uh I mean if it was in Kenya mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> she was in Kenya it would it wouldn't I mean knowing our our health system and cost a lot of money you know, to lose your loved one. To cost a lot of money and probably to even determine, because what happened, she had a seizure, you know? She had a seizure one day and, and she was taken to hospital yeah. by an ambulance and they just did an MRI and that's when they discovered it. Was it that, was that in Kenya? Here? here, just recently here in America. So they discovered it really early, right? They discovered... No, I mean, I think it's... That was just one seizure, right? This is seizure. I, I want to think it's two. The other one might have happened when she was asleep. We did not know. Yeah. But the second time it happened, I was just sitting. We were sitting in the living, living room together. 